pizza. Everybody likes pizza. Um, it's a fantastic family activity. Everyone gets to choose their own topping, so it's a bit of a menu item, you know, not, not uh, just a standard family meal. Um, I'm going to show you how I built this fire pit that uh, I converted into a pizza oven that makes the most amazing wood fired pizza. Um, have a look at this and have a look at the underside. Beautifully nice and crisp. It is literally as good or probably better than any restaurant pizza that I've come across. And uh, we're going to show you how to do it. It's an awesome thing to have in your house. Tenny? Tenny? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's amazing. It is honestly amazing. Every time. Hey! What I can highly recommend is getting one of these. It's a welding glove. You'd probably get it at any hardware store. Um, it allows you to touch hot things without burning your fingers. So watch this. Good. What you need to make the perfect pizza is three things, I think. It's a wood fire, wood fire, heat from wood that's burning. You need a hot surface and you need heat from the top, so I can't bend this finger. There we go, three things. All right, so what I've got here, I've got my, my grid, which is that I had initially. I'm gonna put that there, and I've got this. So this is the secret to making the perfect pizza. So this is a ceramic tile. It's an industrial grade version of it. Um, I bought it for $10 and uh, you probably get a free sample from your local tiling shop anyway and um, the first ones they actually gave me for free of actually ordered a few of these and gave them as gifts to friends and family um, it's a highly polished one but it doesn't have a coating on so this is just the machine polish of the actual ceramic it's not a there's no any artificial coating over it. So that's what it's going to look like. We're going to trace that out and then cut that. There you go. The third thing you need is heat from above to grill the cheese and the toppings from the top. So what I've done is I've gotten this, which is an old grid lid for like a weaver type rye. This is a fake weaver. And then I had this welded on to make it fit over the size, the size of my grid. I um, also made a little cutout over there. So that fits perfectly over my handle over there. Cover right like that. There you go. So the way pizza ovens work, you've got a hot surface, you've got a pizza lying on top of it. So it's the base is being baked from the bottom, and then you've got heat on the side, and it's traveling across a dome that's then radiating heat on top of this cheese. It's melting the cheese and grilling the toppings. The heat then travels across either out a chimney or there's usually a baffle in between that allows the heat to travel and then back out over a chimney at the top. So we're going to try and recreate, no we're not going to try, we have recreated that exact effect with this um, very successfully. So let me show you how I did it. Okay, so the way I've got mine set up is I've got the pizza stone in the middle and then I pull it as far this way as possible until basically until I hit the bricks over here. I then pull these two bricks, pull these two out to get a ventilation flow from air going under over here. I've then put all the burning logs against that side of the structure. And on this side, what I've done is I've pulled out, I've pulled out 
four of these bricks, every second one at the bottom layer, to allow much more airflow to come in. And then what you can do, you can drop logs in over here. So basically what you want to see is you want to have some live flames burning on that side. So I'm going to leave this for a little bit for about five minutes or so, so until we get a good burning structure on there. Remember there's vents behind it. So we've got airflow coming in at the bottom over there. With the heat, we're going to put the stone really high and then we're going to have the heat travel from there over the dome and then out this way. What we're going to do with the dome, we're going to put that on top of the grill like so, okay, we're going to close the vent on that side and we're going to leave the vent open on this side. I've even got these two bricks pulled out over here. So the heat should travel over the pizza and then out on this side, over there and over there. Um, we've played with it quite a bit. So I've fiddled with all the different air flows and heat settings and things back and forth to try and get the perfect balance. So you're going to have to do the same on your side um, but the results been pretty spectacular the way that I've got mine set up at the moment so happy eating okay I've got a bit of a fire burning in the corner now I'm gonna heat up the stone now the trick is you, you mustn't put the stone over uneven heat so I've cracked one in the past where we've had heat on the one end and no heat on the other end so I'm gonna put the stone on on the grid and then I'm going to put it in and then I'm going to put the dome on so it gets heat from all angles, all directions and then I've done it plenty of times and it didn't break. So I think that's the right method. If your fire is struggling, um, you can open up the vent at the back here, or you can even pull out some bricks, bricks to get better ventilation for your fire to burn. But uh, generally, I found that with this closed and that open and those open, that uh, it works perfectly. Okay, so the stone's hot, and we're ready to uh, put our first things in the oven. Um, so I'm going to show you what I mean by the fire's got to travel up the side. Um, if you don't have fire, flames burning. And what I found is the base just gets hot and you don't have that radiated heat from the top grilling the cheese and then you basically just burn your your base before the toppings are roasted at all. So you need those open flames to happen. So if you have a look at how nicely this is burning, see how that's coming out the side there. So all that all that heat's traveling across the dome and radiating onto the stone from the top. So another trick is you want to pre-bake your bases. If you're going to make your own dough, um, which I highly recommend, then it's really floppy and once you dress them, it becomes near impossible to handle. So what we found is if you pre-bake them, then uh, they're nice and stiff and the result is just fantastic. So like I said, pre-baking your dough is highly recommended and, and it's very quick, just 30 seconds, one minute, just until it's stiff and, and easy to handle and that's all you need. Fail. You can see already it's uh, almost ready. As your fire starts to turn into coals, I found that you can just drop little uh, sticks into the back over there, just to add to your fire to keep the flames going. Look at that.
here. So now these are easy to handle and uh, you can dress them. If you dress them, otherwise they become soggy and like I said, almost impossible to handle. So this, re this really is the way to do it. All right, let's have a look what it's doing inside. What the heck? Seriously though, consider subscribing if this was helpful to you. It's been in for about a minute or two now. Um, the nice thing about this is you can have a sneak peek. So we can see it's pretty hot on that side, so I'm gonna just rotate it around. So we can see it's burning over there. It's a little bit too hot. Um, have a look at this and have a look at the underside. It's beautifully nice and crisp. It is literally as good or probably better than any restaurant pizza that I've come across.